Welcome to the Southwest Texas Junior College Library. I am April Cole, the Instructional and Outreach Librarian for the Uvalde campus. This video will walk you through using some of the different databases available to you. To begin, we start at the library website, which is swtjc.libguides.com. You can also access it through the Southwest Texas Junior College Library homepage. From the library page, you can search for your course's LibGuide. A LibGuide is a centralized location for library resources that will be of most use to you in a specific course. To find your course's LibGuide, type your course or instructor's name in the Search LibGuides box at the top left of the page. If there is not a LibGuide specific to your instructor, you can use the general LibGuide for the course. Navigate the LibGuide using the tabs along the top. There is a wealth of knowledge inside each tab, including databases, websites, citation information, and more. If you are using library resources away from the library, you will see a blue screen like this. All you need to do is enter your student ID number, but enter two zeros in front of your ID number. For instance, if my ID number was 0999999, I would type in 00, zero then 0999999. To begin, we will look at the three main databases, EBSCO, Credo, and Gale. EBSCO is a multidisciplinary database, which means it will have information on most every subject. Credo is a reference database, so it will have information that you might find in encyclopedias or dictionaries. Gale is mainly a literature and reference database. For this video, we will focus on the EBSCO databases. Academic Search Complete is an EBSCO database that covers a vast number of subjects and is therefore our most used database. When you enter an EBSCO database, you will see the blue bar across the top and the circle on the left side that says EBSCO host. I recommend that before you begin searching, you create an EBSCO folder. By doing this, you will be able to save documents that you find so you can access them at a different time without going through the entire search process again. Click on the Sign In button and choose to create a new account. Simply type in your information and click Save Changes. You may use any email address you would like, but make sure that it's one that you will use throughout your time with the college to ensure that you can retrieve your password if you forget it. Once complete, click New Search and you are ready to begin. The screen should say Sign Out now instead of Sign In. If it says Sign In, just click it and enter your username and password for the account you just created. Now you can retrieve your saved documents anytime you sign into EBSCO, regardless of what computer you're using or where you are. From this screen, you can type in search terms and set limits to narrow your results. Databases do not work the same as Google. You cannot type in your entire question and expect to get accurate results. You will only type in the most important words for your topic. Please see the Getting Started with Search Terms video for more information. Type your search term in the box. Then you can choose Full Text and determine what date of publication you're looking for. You may want to make sure you have current information, so be aware of how long ago the articles were written. You can choose Peer Reviewed, which means that other people in the field of study have read and critiqued the article to make sure it is reliable. Once you have chosen your limiters, head back to the top and click Search. You can always change your limits using the panel on the left. Here you can read an abstract about each of your results. The abstract is a summary about the article. You can read this to make sure that the article is what you're looking for. Reading the abstract is not the same as reading the article. You cannot include an abstract in your citation information. You can only cite the full text of articles. If you decide that this is an article you want, you can view the full text by clicking here. Or you can click the link. Clicking the link will take you to more information about the article, which includes the abstract. Then you can access the full text by clicking here. This would be a great time to add the article to your folder so you can open it later. Simply click the folder icon and it will add it to your folder. 
Notice that the folder at the top now has a piece of paper sticking out. This shows that it has been added. If you decide you don't want to keep this article, simply click the folder again and it will remove it from your folder. You can also get the citation for the articles by using the yellowy sheet of paper on the right hand side. Clicking this will provide you with a variety of citations that you can cut and paste into your reference list. Make sure that you choose the citation format required by your instructor. If you are using library resources away from the library, you will see a blue screen like this. All you need to do is enter your student ID number, but enter two zeros in front of your ID number. For instance, if my ID number was 0999999, I would type in 00, zero then 0999999. Zero nine 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 nine. If you have further questions, our contact information is on the library homepage, or you are always welcome to stop by in person. We wish you the best of luck with all your studies.